Hi folks, we've been looking at the resurrection and we're in the next part of our series and we're going to look now at a whole bunch of sceptical objections to the resurrection. One of the um, classic attacks on the resurrection is the authority of Christ, uh, sorry, the authority of the Bible. Uh, Skeptics will come along and say, yeah, you believe the resurrection, but it's all rooted in the Bible and it's just Bible. And at the end of the day, it's just Bible. And that's not proof, that's not evidence. And anyway, the Bible is basically full of historical and literary mistakes. And we can't take it literally. In fact, there are many Christians who are beginning to see that we can look at the Bible in a metaphorical way, and that's best to look at it that way. It's not really rooted in history. So what are the objections to that? Well, first of all, the scholars have often come, come and said that the Bible's not rooted in history. They said the Bible was wrong on um, Ur of Chaldees. There was no such uh, culture as Ur of Chaldees. Uh, and now, for many, many, many years now, we have loads of information about Babylon and about uh, that culture. And yet, there was a time when people would criticise the Bible and say, the Bible's just talking nonsense about this. Another example is uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, it's been said a long, long time the Bible was wrong upon that, but recent archaeology has discovered an area um, which, descri which is described in the Bible as Sodom and Gomorrah. And we could go on and on and on of civilizations and cultures that the Bible's mentioned and the scholars have come along and said the Bible's wrong, there's no such thing as the, that culture, and the Bible has been correct. It was said that Moses couldn't have written the Bible, uh, written the Pentateuch, because there was no writing in the time of Moses. This was said by scholars over 130, 40 years ago. But, we discovered many tablets from Babylonian and other cultures where we found that there was writing and it's quite possible that someone like Moses could have written the Pentateuch. So in other words, when people come along with these arguments about the Bible is just not historical, the Bible has proved many critics wrong on many, many occasions like that. Um, on the contradictions of the Bible, skeptics like to use that to undermine the authority of the Bible. But the argument that I've been using for the resurrection of Christ has not been rooted in the Bible. You said, but Jay, you used the, you used, you started right at the beginning on the Apostle Paul and his letters. Yes, I did, but I didn't use it as the Bible. I used it as a historian. And historians accept that there are seven epistles of Paul that are good historical information, whether you believe the Bible or not. They believe that they were written by Paul and that they are good historical source information. Okay? So, in other words, those who come along and critique the Bible and say the Bible is not the Word of God doesn't attack the resurrection of Christ because you can prove the resurrection of Christ purely from a historical method. Okay, but when you do come a, a, and attack the Bible and say the Bible is full of contradictions, well, we go to the to the fact that the Bible has prophecies that have come true. The Bible has prophesied the Greek Empire, the Roman Empire, the Persian Empire, in the Book of Daniel, and was right in its prophecy. So, you know, the Bible is accurate. Um, secondly, the Bible is is a book that's been written over 2,000 years. It was written by many different authors in many different countries, uh, many different cultures, many different types of authors. Some were farmers, some were, were, were kings, some were, were um, ambassadors. Uh, a whole, whole variety of different people in different cultures. And yet, over those 2,000 years or more, the Bible has one message, and it's the message of the Messiah. The Messiah will come one day and will die on a cross and rise again. Now that is amazing that you have that unifying fact of uh, 2,000 years of writing as one message. 
Uh, as to the contradictions, most of the contradictions can be cleaned up and have been cleaned up. Uh, you might be able to find one or two, but that doesn't pull down the fact that the general structure of the Bible uh, has, has been shown to be solidly true. Okay? And, you know, mathematicians call, talk about plausibility structure. That is to say, if you have a good plausibility structure, you might not know the minutial details of some things, but that doesn't mean that you're wrong on the big things. And the Bible, it's big picture. It's prophecies, the fact that it's a unified whole over 2,000 years, the fact that it changes lives, and the fact that its morality is, is the highest morality known to man. These are great pillars that you can bring a contradiction up doesn't pull down the Bible whatsoever. And these so-called contradictions um, can be have been answered, most of them. They might be able to find one or two that are difficult to answer, but that doesn't mean that they are contradictions, and it doesn't mean that they pull down the authority and inspiration of the Bible. Um, so we'll leave it there uh, concerning that, and uh, I'll leave a link to a resource that you can study the inerrancy of the Bible. Okay, thank you for listening and take care.